Hello ladies and gems, this is Blood Ganon. I'm going to be showing you my sword collection on Destiny today. I've kind of finally completed all my exotic sword quests. I completed all my legendary swords. They're not all maxed out though, because I'm just doing this for a completion. And I've also completed the uh, Refer a Friend Infinity Swords, which are actually pretty cool. So, without ado, I'll show you what I got. So I neatly stacked them in my slots, as you can see. So we're going to start with the exotic stuff. Um, I'm going to do a quick rundown on how you get the exotic swords. It's not going to be efficient. This is not a guide on how to get them. Just letting you guys know. This is just, just to quickly inform you guys, okay? So to get an exotic sword, you need to do a sword quest. After you do, like, you start the Taken King quest, right? You have to obtain a legendary sword through Lord Shax, which is really obtainable. 25 helium flakes, I believe. Level up your sword to 280. And then you complete the tree. You go back to Lord Shax after you're done with that. You start a quest. And step one would be called Essential Elements. Okay? Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You also have to do a Crucible. Uh, crucible. Get a... Uh, oh, man. 25 kills with the sword and... Uh, kill 50 majors as well before you, before you start this quest. So after you completed your Crucible kills and you completed your major kills and you've maxed out your sword at 280 and all the trees are done, you get the first step called the Essential Elements. You collect 10 rare planetary materials and also obtain 500 ability kills. All right. So the sword you want to work on, you're going to work on the ability kills. It actually doesn't matter which ability kills, I think. Does it really matter? Actually, yes, it does. So if you want the Razor Lighter Sword, guess what? You have to get a whole bunch of... Um, I forgot what the ability is called. <laughs> Arc the solar burn kills. Thank you. I totally forgot. Brain farted. You got to get like a hundred. I think it's five hundred solar kills, and you got to collect a whole bunch of. I want to say relic iron. If I'm wrong, no relic iron is for the void sword. I believe it's on the moon. So you have to collect a bunch of helium filaments, which are a big pain in the butt. Um, anyways. As you do all that, you go to step two for your exotic sword. It's called Good Temper. Speak to Lord Shax. Once you speak to him, he'll give you uh, the step three, which will be called Arms Day Alloys, which is um, hang around until Arms Day arrives. So wait until next Wednesday. Or if it's almost Wednesday, wait until Wednesday. For some reason, you do not get any of these swords on the gunsmith, which is kind of makes sense because he's a gunsmith. But I don't understand how Lord Shax is... A blacksmith. <laughs> he could be. I mean, there could be some hidden storyline we don't know about that could show up in future DLCs that explains how he's able to forge swords. Who knows? Anyways. After that, you go down to... Oh, yeah, you talk to Lord Shax again, which means you activate the quest called Sealing the Blade. And this one, you must kill the Warden of Oryx and Elok Hul in 30 seconds. So what that means is when you're running down through... Um, the sunless cell strike you get one on the side you get a strike that shows up on the side which is its own quest you can find people who are matching and matchmaking to help you with the swords hopefully they comply and they say yes when you're running through down through that to the sunless cell uh so yeah sunless cell strike you get down you there's three wardens you have to fight and they all take turns i believe it goes arc void and solar or it's some kind of son of some kind of order like that and you have to get the um, warden down, the wardens, the warden uh, down to a certain amount of health, and then make sure you kill all the adds, get Ella Cool down to almost one hit, kill the warden, and then you have 30 seconds to kill Ella Cool, because if you don't, you don't get your sword. I recommend you do this more than just one person, though, because soloing this was the pain in the butt, and it's easier with the hunter with, was it Tether? Yeah, with Tether than any of the other ability. Alright, and then, the, yeah. It's just a big pain in the butt. Anyways, that was my quick rundown. It wasn't perfect, but, yeah. Anyways, con continuing on with the collection, you have to do... Um, actually, you don't do anything. <laughs> the Dark Drinker. My favorite blade. Now, the reason why I like this blade a lot is it reminds me of... Wind Waker. This sword has almost the same elemental designs in Waker as some of the other weapons I've seen in that game. Other than that, it's a... It's a void weapon. I like void. 
I'm a warlock, like Voidwalker. Nothing is better than Voidwalker, I think. That's just my personal preference. But this sword, uh, I would say it's it's not bad. I wish they kind of gave it a different special, but it has a spinning rotation attack, which is, it spins in all 360 directions, which cleans up ads that are trying to surround you. Really, really useful. What is it called? Supermassive Vortex. <laughs> Interesting name. And here's the Warrior of Light, which increases the attack, of course. Decrease in energy, but increase in attack. So the Dark Drinker. My personally, this is my favorite design sword out of all of them. Razor Lighter, I believe. Razor Light? Razor Lighter, right? Yeah, Razor Lighter has the, actually the strongest PvE conditions, where it has the thing called the Phoenix Uppercut. The Bolt Caster. Um, I wouldn't really call this a useful PvE weapon. I've seen people solo Crota with this sword. I don't know, for some reason does more damage to his shields than a rocket launcher. <laughs> Unless you still have the Galahorn. <laughs> Mine's actually not maxed out completely. I still only get my 335. But here's the design of it. And all these swords are powered by these special jewels. They're all elemental jewels. Solar, Void, and Arc. Alright, now we're going to look at the swords that you start when you got the Taken King. So... The Taken King swords, they all actually look pretty generic, but they got the jewel on them as well. Right here. But the sword... The sword steel on the top is all the same on all of them. The only difference is that they just do different... Um, elemental types of damage. It's the only difference about them. I, like, I still like that they have the, um, aerial, the aerial slash. Where is that called? Right here. Sword Strike. Attack in the air. That's kind of cool. I think it's useful. It crits pretty hard against enemies. Really useful against majors that have shields, but... Hmm. I guess it depends on which one you want to use. I don't really have a particular favorite in that because they don't have unique designs. They just have different colors. Alright. And last but not least, we're going to look at... The Infinity Edge Swords. Now these, for people who do not know how to get these, you have to do a thing, a quest called Refer a Friend. And it's the Infinity Link quest, I believe. Or you have to run down, or somebody that has a new account, you do all these storylines, you get them up to like level 40, uh, you help them beat a strike, they have to do, I think, a, maybe a raid? I don't, I don't exactly remember, and then they also have to do a Nightfall. I don't think there's the raid. I think the Nightfall's the last one. But... You obtain these swords through that quest. And to activate that, you have to go to Bungie.net. They refer you through theirs, and you have to say okay. They say okay, and then it pops up in your quest line, I believe, through the speaker. And you start it. So, I did mine with my friend, um, Mark. I work with him. He, he recently started playing Destiny, I think, about like two months ago. I gotta play more raids with them. I promise not to do that. <laughs> so I guess we'll start looking at these. These swords also look very generic. I was a little bummed out that the blades didn't on them didn't look different, but they look cooler in their picture up here. Totally bummed out. They look very generic, but they're they're collectibles, I guess. I mean, if you're trying to collect all the atoms, I guess you gotta get these too. So here's the solar one. Here's the void one. If they literally took this design up here and they put them at the edge of the blade, this I think these swords would look a lot more cooler. I think they would. It's just me, though. Uh, see, that looks so cool up there. I wish they did that to this one right here. I really wish they did that. That would have been so sick. So, yeah. These are all the swords that you can obtain in Destiny at the moment. I'm not sure if the new DLC that's coming out in September is going to have any more swords because there's no more to put in the slots. But for everybody working on the exotic sword quests, I recommend that you do these with friends. It really stinks going all by yourself in the Cosmodrome or on the moon or, um, I can't remember, on Mars, trying to collect all these all by yourself. It really stinks. Uh, here's a hint, or here's a tip, I guess. Uh, make sure you have a ghost that's going to be homing towards the materials you need to collect. So say you um, don't have that ghost, right? If you're collecting helium f uh, flakes, uh, where is it? Right here. This, if you do not have a hunter and you're doing these all by yourself, get a ghost that has these things on it. There's helium, there's spirit bloom, 
There's one for, um, gosh, I keep forgetting what that spirit bloom. Um, the one on Earth, I can't remember what that one's called. Spin metal. And then there's also on Mars, which is relic iron. Make sure your ghosts have those uh, filament sensors on them so you can track these because it's just a pain in the butt without these ghosts, okay? So find a ghost that has the elements that you need to collect all of your exotic swords. The exotic swords, I think, are all very useful. Each, every single one of them actually serve a purpose. This one's good for raids. This one's good for raids and PvE and special major bosses. And this one is really good for a crucible if you want to really piss people off. Because <laughs> I've seen some crazy kills with this thing. Alright, this is Blood of Ganon. I've completely completed my, um, my sword quest once again. I'm willing to help people out if they need help grinding for materials because I personally enjoyed it. To a point. But I don't mind helping other people because, I don't know, who knows, we could be friends. Maybe. Or perhaps we could be friends. Can Ganon have friends? That's a good question. Alright, this is Blood of Ganon signing out. I'll see you guys later.